Good to have you on. Thank you for having me. I, you know, I am familiar with your work. I never, I never miss uh, Face the Nation on Sundays, and you did a long study of voters all over the, the 2018 uh, election to see how people were shifting around. Were you surprised at all about the results of the 2018 election? No, I, I think we saw a lot of this coming, you know, but I think the key was to try to explain it, right? Before the election, we put out what would happen if a lot of people turned out. And sure enough, they did. And that's one of the things pollsters always wrestle with. Was that one of the things that was predicted that a lot of people would turn out? Well, see, prediction, that's sort of a tricky word for pollsters, right? We try, we try to explain things. We don't always try was to predict. Was it expected? People. Was it expected? Well, people said that they were going to show up. Do people tell the truth? <sighs> yes, they do. Actually, yes, they do. You know, people ask me that all the time. Oh, do people lie to pollsters, right? Do they admit who they're voting for? And I always say, why would you bother to spend 15 minutes on the phone with me, with folks, just to lie, right? Just to sort of make stuff up. Oh, to feel important. Well, maybe. But, you know, I think what really happens is they might, you know, say that they're going to turn out. They might mean that they're going to turn out, but then things get in the way, right? Or things feel like they're not as important. But this year, what we saw was that people were motivated. People said that they thought this election was as important or more important than a presidential year, right? And so they did actually turn out. You had 16% of the electorate here said they'd never voted in a midterm before. So we got almost half, we got half the electorate actually showing up. And that was one of the keys. What right? happened that was surprising? Because we kind of expected the House to yeah. go this way, we expected the Senate to go that way. What happened that no one saw? I, I think that the, the size, I think that that size was probably a little higher than a lot of people thought. You know, I think that the size of the Democratic gains were probably a little higher. And, you know, you get out to places like Southern California, traditionally Republican place, that, play, that place... Orange County. Play Orange County. It's for the first time since, like, 1935 or something. It's yep. all blue. Yep, all blue. <laughs> And, and, and I, think that, I think that a lot of people doubted whether young people would show up, whether those people hadn't voted in midterms would show up, and in fact, they did. But again, you know, the pollster's job here is to explain what happened. And some of it was, and you showed this about the emotions people were feeling, right? We were tracking all along, people saying, how would you feel if the other side won? They said they'd be angry, right? And so, so, <laughs> and so you know, that part, whether you like it or not, that part was motivating to people. That part was, was getting people out. And the other part was the president was, he wasn't on the ballot, but he was on people's minds in historic numbers, right? For both for and against, people said they were coming out to either support the president or oppose the president. He said, imagine I'm on the ballot, and then when they lost, he said, I wasn't on the ballot. <laughs> well, look, he was on people's minds. It was the highest level that we've seen in the exit polls for people saying that the president was on their minds. So well, definitely, definitely a big factor. You, you, ha you have a, uh, a new book here. Where did you get this number? A pollster's guide to making sense of the world. Um, what is the hardest group to poll? Who are the hardest people to pin down about what they really think? Oh, young people are hard to find. Young people are hard to pull. There's, There's no so many question. of them, though. There's a lot of them, but look, they've got other things on their minds. They're not necessarily engaged in politics. They're busy out doing something else. They might not be home to pick up a phone. Even we do a lot of polling online, a lot of interviewing online. You still have to remind them to take it. You know, they've just got other things going on. So that part, that part is hard. And look, it's become harder to find people in general. We have to make more phone calls. We have to make more reminders to people to do it. But the key is to keep on doing it until we get that, that microcosm of America. That's what a poll sample should be, and that's one of the things I explain. It should be a little, little microcosm of America in the sample. The man knows what you're thinking and why you're thinking it. <laughs> the book is Where Did You Get This Number? Available now. Anthony Salvanto, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Josh Rovin.